Hey there, welcome back to our channel. If you watched our previous video, you will recall that I provided an overview of the exciting topics and what GPU we will be exploring throughout this brand new video series. Well, today is the date we take the plunge. In this video, I am going to introduce you to a starter template for creating web GPU applications using TypeScript and Webpack. The starter template was originally created for building the sample projects in the book Web GPU by Examples. It can be also used as a starting point for creating your own Web GPU applications using TypeScript and Webpack. You can download the starter template from GitHub repository using the following command. Let's begin by opening the template in Visual Studio Code. Take a look at the package.json file, where you can see that the web GPU version being used is 0 0.1.31. If you prefer, you can update it to latest version in this file. To get started, open a terminal window and run the command. npm install to install webpack and other necessary npm packages. Once the installation is complete, you can run the command npm run prod to proceed. This will compile and build the application. Next, click the Go Live link to open your default web browser and view the application. Now, let's explore the two example projects included in the starter template. Firstly, we have the Web GPU info page accessible from the left side navigation menu. Click on the Web GPU info link and the right pane will display all the relevant details. This information includes specifics about the adapter, supported DPU limits, and supported DPU features provided by the Web GPU API. Remember, since Web GPU is still in development, it is important to stay updated with this information. The second example focuses on frame rate and rendering time. FPS, or frames per second, is a crucial metric for assessing the rendering performance of web GPU applications. It represents the number of executions over a given time period and is directly related to the code execution time. In JavaScript, we typically achieve animation using the request animation frame function commonly abbreviated as our AF. This function allows us to define a callback for our render code, which is executed at the beginning of each frame, aligning with the display's refresh rate. Most displays have a refresh rate of 60 Hz, which translates to 60 frames per second. As a result, our rendering code is called a maximum of 60 times per second. The shortest possible execution time for our rendering code is approximately 16.6 milliseconds. If the execution time exceeds this threshold, it will impact the timing of the next frame, leading to dropped frames and reduced frame rate. This can result in a less smooth and visually appealing animation experience. Now, let's explore an alternative scenario. In cases where our rendering code executes faster than the 16.6 milliseconds threshold, the frame rate will be perfectly in sync with the display's refresh rate, typically 60 Hz. In such situations, we can employ methods like date.now or performance.now to determine the rendering duration more precisely. However, here is the exciting part. We don't need to implement this functionality ourselves. Thanks to the stats.js library, we have access to a user-friendly performance monitor that has already handled these calculations for us. This utility presents us with a simple information box displaying three performance parameters. First is FPS, 
This parameter represents the number of frames rendered in the last second. Second is ms value. That represents the milliseconds needed to render a single frame. The last one is the MB value, which denotes the megabytes of allocated memory. Fortunately, by integrating the stats.js library into our project, we can easily access and leverage these performance parameters, gaining valuable insights into our animation's performance. Now, let's click on the frame rate link and the right pane will display the current frame rate. Here, you have the option to adjust your display's refresh rate. In my case, the refresh rate is set to 60 Hz. By default, the frame time or code execution time is set to 10 milliseconds, which is below the threshold of 16.6 milliseconds that we discussed earlier. As expected, the stats.js panel confirms that the FPS value remains at 60 as long as the rendering time stays below the 16.6 milliseconds mark. Clicking on the stats panel will display the rendering time of 10 milliseconds, aligning with our expectations. Clicking it again will reveal the memory usage. Now, let's see what happens when we increase the frame time or code execution time to a value above the threshold. Let's set it to 40 milliseconds. Anticipating a decline in the frame rate, we can observe that the stats panel now displays a frame rate of 25 FPS. Upon clicking on the panel, we can see that the rendering time is indeed 40 milliseconds consistent with our frame time input. Throughout this new video series, we will be utilizing the stats package to monitor the performance of web GPU applications. It is an invaluable tool for optimizing and fine-tuning our projects. Now, let's conclude today's video. In the next installment, I will be introducing an exciting NPM package named WebGPU Simplify, designed to streamline the creation of WebGPU applications. Make sure to stay tuned for the upcoming video. Thank you so much for watching today's tutorial. I hope you found it informative and useful for your WebGPU development journey. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Until next time, happy coding!